When we run an application or computer program, even if AI equipped, it is almost always a calculation of some sort, or pattern matching, or some data-driven effort. Nothing too creative. For example, given a geometry of a wing, computers can calculate its drag. Show a computer a picture of an animal, and it can probably identify it. Show a computer a CT scan, and if there's an anomaly there, it will probably identify it. Of course humans are capable of much more. Tell an engineer what you need, and he or she will design a solution for you. That's what they were trained for. The same goes for properly configured genetic algorithms. No other AI tool is truly capable of that. This video is intended as an introduction to genetic algorithms and the way they work. It will be followed by additional videos, each covering a separate example. Genetic algorithms were invented in 1975 by John Holland of the University of Michigan, who had degrees in all three fields, computer science, electrical engineering and biology. Genetic algorithms are recognized as one of AI's most innovative achievements. So let's begin. Assume for a moment that our problem domain is that of human-powered terrestrial locomotion, such as bicycles, scooters, rollerblades and so forth. The three product parameters that we chose to show here, out of many, are speed, foldability and price. Let us now go back for a moment to 1870, when we've just read that in France, an inventor by the name of Eugène Meyer, has invented the first bicycle with pedals, and that it'll soon be available for sale outside France as well. Being of moderate price, relatively low speed, and no serious ability of folding, it would probably fit on our chart where the red dot has landed. Imagine now that Eugène Meyer had a small computer, and that genetic algorithms had already been invented when he first started thinking about his bicycle. Using genetic algorithms, this is the methodology that Eugène Meyer would have followed. 1. He would first break down his solution into its elements. John Holland would ask us to call this, our product's chromosome. The so-called genes of this chromosome would be all of the decisions, and subsequently the elements, that are part of the design, broken up to their last detail. If there's any additional technology or device, or component that could be considered as an element in a solution, this is the time to add it. Note that as a side bonus of genetic algorithms, we are disciplined to think methodically about the project we are working on which is what system engineers have been telling us all along. In step 2, the genetic algorithm clones this chromosome a few times and creates a population, which John Holland called, individuals, all based on the same chromosome. But if we don't make any changes, all that we would see, is more dots piling up over the one we have with our baseline solution. If we do introduce some changes to the chromosomes, even randomly, then each time we create a new individual, this individual will fall in a different location in our problem space. Step 3. Suppose now that we were to ask Mr. Meyer to tell us what in his opinion would make his product great. He would probably answer that ride comfort, ability to go fast, affordability and foldability are what's important to him. That's exactly what the genetic algorithm likes to hear, because it is now establishing a fitness function which can be any one of the goals of Mr. Meyer, or a combination of them. The genetic algorithm would also be happy to take into account features that Mr. Meyer would prefer to minimize, which we call, soft constraints, and some that he'd want to avoid altogether which we call, hard constraints. Step 4. Running the algorithm. From now on, the genetic algorithm has all the information it needs and takes over, creating generation after generation of individuals. The genetic structure of these individuals has higher and higher fitness, or in other words, better and better solutions to our problem. In each cycle, the fittest individuals are chosen to establish the next generation. Then, just like mating in nature, their genes are mixed via crossover. And once in a while, some mutation of a randomly picked gene is also added, injecting some unpredictability into the process. This goes on, generation after generation, while our individuals are getting closer with every cycle, to the goals we set out to achieve with our design. Those offsprings that had undesirable properties have either been eliminated, or had their fitness penalized. 
and those that were closest to what we were after got promoted, and were chosen to establish the next generation. The result is, a solution that has moved away from the initial design point, and towards the parameters that the fitness function directed the solution to. Looking at the final results, we can surely tell that in the case that just completed running, the fitness function must have had a strong emphasis on foldability. A minute ago, the word seating flashed by. Not part of the standard algorithm, seating is a relatively advanced topic. The idea is, at some point during the run, to bring in external chromosomes to potentially mate with the individuals of the current generation. The goal is to increase the variety of solutions in the evolution of the current run. These external chromosomes could for example come from similar, existing and successful designs, or even select individuals that excelled in previous generations. Here's a timeline of the solution's fitness progress in an actual genetic algorithm run. Notice the initial climb, then usually a plateau, but many times, one finds that every few generations there's a really talented individual, that stands out in comparison to the other in its generation. Usually, some algorithm parameters have to be adjusted, to get a steady build-up of the fitness function. These include the size of the population, the frequency of mutations and a few more. So there is a little bit of trial and error and experimentation with the algorithm's parameters. But it's worth the effort, because down the road, there may come an offspring that really excels. Genetic algorithms are phenomenal. But this shouldn't surprise us. Because this is how evolution works, this is how humankind evolved, this is how some small mammals learned to fly and became bats. And this is how some birds became so efficient, that they are able to fly once a year from North Europe to Central Africa and back. The genius of John Holland was in finding a way to harness nature's mechanism and create such a powerful computer algorithm from that. By the way, we don't even have to start with a baseline design. A random set of genes, with a good definition of what we're looking for, is enough for the algorithm to create real solutions for us, even out of thin air. So it should come as no surprise, that genetic algorithms often provide solutions to complex problems that are unattainable by any other method, and even surpass human abilities. This is both in regards to their ability to handle large amounts of data, but also finding out-of-the-box solutions, which we sometimes fail to consider. Genetic algorithms have been around since 1975 and have gained hold in many fields of life. Recently however, we are seeing a new surge in the use of genetic algorithms. One of the applications is to replace the traditional gradient descent method used in the training of neural networks. The advantage of genetic algorithms over gradient descent is their ability to jump out of local minima. Another recent development is combining genetic algorithms with fuzzy logic, to create what's known as genetic fuzzy trees. These hybrid systems have demonstrated extremely powerful, real-time capabilities when installed in mission computers of unmanned aircraft. A third, relatively new development is the field of generative engineering, also known as generative design, and it's making waves. It is still in the experimental stage and developed by a few companies, including industry leaders in computer-aided design. Of these, Autodesk, the company behind AutoCAD, has so far published more material than others, so it's convenient to use some of their materials to demonstrate the tool. Genetic algorithms are at the heart of this groundbreaking application. Here's a short video from Autodesk. The goal here is to design a support structure between the chassis of a motorcycle and the rear wheel. The first step is defining important interface points, shown in green. The items marked in red show the envelope of constraints or obstacles that the structure must go around. These are the hard constraints. The light blue arrow is the load which in this case, is just the vertical component on the wheel. The users have a menu where they can choose the type of analysis, and also the alternatives to consider for manufacture. And here we see the individuals, generation after generation, each a little different from the previous ones, but still meeting the design parameters and constraints, and with an ever-improving fitness. No other AI tool can do this. Soon we will post on this channel a few real-life examples, that use genetic algorithms to advance design, manpower scheduling, safety of complex systems, and more. 
it is highly recommended, that viewers first familiarize themselves with the basics of genetic algorithms as explained in this introduction. This will help them better understand the examples that will follow soon.